How's everyone doing? Happy New Year. This is my first Blu-ray collection update of 2021. And uh, I started off the new year real well right here. Uh, <laughs> for those of you guys who've been around for my channel for a while, you might have uh, remember, I think it was like five years ago, I had bursitis. And if you don't know what that is, I don't blame you because I never heard of it before either. Uh, but I woke up and I couldn't move my arm. And uh, five years ago when it first happened, I remember I was, uh, I had somebody sleep over and she was like, you need to go to the ER. I was like, ah, that'll be all right. And that was a mistake because the next day it was just like excruciating pain. And it's kind of the same thing that happened this time, uh, where the first day I was like, oh, all right, it's not going to be too bad. And then the second day and then third day, fourth day, fifth day, like for all, like for a few days, it was just like excruciating, throbbing pain. Um, but I will say, uh, I've had this since New Year's Eve, by the way. It started off the New Year real strong, real real good. But uh, <laughs> um, I feel like I need to use, I didn't use the sling quite as much this time. Uh, it's just uncomfortable, you know, especially to sleep in. Uh, so I'm actually trying to use it a little bit more right now uh, because I thought it would start to get better by now and it really hasn't gotten, uh, hasn't progressed uh, enough as far as uh, getting better. Um, not quite as much pain, although I went to pick something up earlier and I moved slightly, you know, a jar and just the, the, the sharp pain from that was killer. But anyways, I digress. So uh, my arms are in a sling because of that. That's what's going on. Um, fun times. Last time I think it took like a full three weeks. So um, I'm already like week two right now. Hopefully it won't be too much longer. But uh, again, I didn't utilize the sling enough. So hopefully that won't hinder me too much. But uh, hopefully you guys, you guys had a happy New Year's Eve and New Year's and your 2021 is starting out great. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff to show you, uh, but I figure out this all came, uh, one came last night, the other ones all came today. So I actually posted on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, go ahead and do that. Uh, same ch name as this channel right here, Absolute Sublime One. Uh, I will be posting on there more frequently. Uh, I haven't recently, but I will be doing so just because it's, you know, it's easy to show what came in and what I'm going to watch that night. Uh, and I'm close to 2,000 followers on there. So help me get to 2,000. I think I'm like 25 away. Uh, but here is the six pickups, Blu-rays, uh, one 4K and one DVD right there. This is an awkward thumbnail face. And actually, I think this might be uh, shooting in 4K. So let me know if you notice any uh, difference in picture quality. I got a new phone, new iPhone 12 Pro Max, whatever the heck it is. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully the picture quality is decent. But I think it'll take like so much longer to upload. And I'm rambling already. I, I digress. Let's get into the movies. First up uh, is Fat Man right here. And uh, this is from Paramount. And I watched this last night, and this was much better than I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be kind of like over the top and um, a little bit more ridiculous than it turned out to be. It was more rooted in reality, modernized take on Santa. It's Mel Gibson as Santa Claus, and he can't pay his bills, so he uh, takes a job with the U.S. military. Uh, and the elves are, you know, making these, uh, you know, components for uh, essentially like... Um, a uh, little like pads and stuff to control, you know, uh, airplanes and drones and stuff like that. Uh, you know, so keypads and stuff. And there's a little kid who gets a lump of coal and he's just a, you know, terrible little kid. And uh, he hires a hitman, uh, Walton Goggins right there, who is so good in this role. And uh, he tracks down Santa and, uh, you know, is going to take out his own personal revenge along with the hit. Um, I really enjoy this one. I, I like Mel Gibson a lot as an actor and director. Let me know what your favorite Mel Gibson directed and starred movie is. Uh, again, Apocalypto is one of my all-time favorite movies. Did a great job there. And also uh, recently in uh, Hacksaw Ridge. And uh, as an actor, he's been in a few things recently that I thought were pretty underrated. Get the Gringo, Bloodfather, uh, even Dragged Across Concrete. Love the heck out of that movie. And I remember there was like a lot of a buzz for it initially. And then kind of like died down a bit but I love that one too uh, but I think he's a tremendous actor and he was really good in this role very different take on Santa Claus uh, some good snowy setting moments in here too and there were a couple parts that definitely caught me off guard uh, but I really enjoyed this one and I would say give it a fair chance um, it's not quite over the top as you would think all oh, there are there are some crazy action moments here too but uh it's more rooted in reality again he has to pay the bills uh the holiday spirit is down kids are terrible uh and so he's not um you know making as many gifts sending as many gifts out doing as much work so he's not getting you know uh, what he would normally get from the government for that 
Uh, so yeah, that's a part of the film too, and the, the tie-in with that. And then his uh, wife in here, um, played by uh, Marianne Jean uh, Baptiste. And uh, yeah, the special features on here too. Um, again, I enjoy this one. I think people should give this one a fair chance. Uh, really different take on Santa. <laughs> uh, next up, this showed up. Um, I assume it's like a review copy. It's funny because whenever I request an animated title from Warner Brothers, I'm always told no. Uh, but then randomly certain things will show up, like this, for instance. Uh, this is the DC Universe movie uh, Batman Soul of the Dragon. And it says it's set in the midst of the swinging 70s. I thought the 60s were the swinging decade. Uh, and it takes place in Elseworlds, which is um, from the comics back, I want to say like late 80s or so. Uh, it was when it started, but they had like stuff that would take uh, place outside of like the DC Universe. Uh, basically, you know, he's training under a master sensei and there's gonna be lots of martial arts and uh, discipline and all kinds of different deadly menaces uh, and you know, there's other characters here, Richard Dragon, Ben Turner, who was Bronze Tiger, Lady Shiva. Uh, that right down the front cover, uh, that character looks like uh, Bruce Lee. So I don't know if that's gonna play into part of it as well, but uh, this character on the back kind of looks like uh, Iron Fist that guy I assume that is maybe Richard Dragon but um, I will say a lot of these DC animated films are really good better than their live action films I think Marvel is so much better for the Mar uh, for the live action but the DC animated films some really strong ones uh, so I am looking forward to checking this one out and they make a lot of them too so and there's some good voice actors a lot of times too so I'll be checking this one out this is the Lone 4k title nice surprise to just show up out of nowhere sometimes that happens uh you know i've you know worked with different studios and stuff and uh, you know sometimes you request stuff sometimes stuff just shows up um usually for bigger studios that's a rarity but uh, you know warner brothers though uh again like i said for the animated titles it's happened a few times where something just shows up and i'm not gonna you know look a gift horse in the mouth you know but uh I'm looking forward to it especially again the dc uh, anime titles are uh, pretty awesome from what i've seen and a lot of times they'll include some special features uh in here for uh like actual other animated TV shows and segments and stuff like that, specials. Uh, next up are some Warner Archive titles. These were sent to me for review. Uh, Warner Archive, I'm loving what they're doing and I can't wait to see what they release in the future. I heard they're gonna release Pump Up the Volume with uh, Christian Slater. Uh, it's bigger than a baby's arm, you remember that? Uh, so again, they've released some amazing films, a lot of older films, but some you know newer ones as well. Uh, this one right here is After the Thin Man. It's the follow-up uh, from The Thin Man. Um, and this one uh, is Skippy in it. It has basically like the whole uh, crew back here too. Uh, William Powell, Myrna Loy. Um, and it's just another uh, kind of like mystery comedy caper kind of movie. Um, yeah, it's a uh, comedy whodunit. Uh, yeah, it's Nick and Nora and Charles and they return from the West Coast. And the philandering hubby of Nora's cousin has gone missing. Round up the usual suspects, or unusual suspects, actually. Um, so, yeah, basically everybody is back here, the writers and director and a lot of the stars as well, including the four-footed one, Skippy, right there. Um, so I'm looking forward to checking this one out. I've never seen uh, After the Thin Man. Um, so excited for that one. And, you know, it's nice to see a lot of these, like, uh, you know, dog actors were really popular back in the day. So it's great to see them getting love like that. Uh, next up is Room for One More, starring uh, Cary Grant and Betsy Drake, and they were married in real life uh, for a while, too. I think, I don't know if this was his longest marriage. He was married like five times, I believe. Um, and it's, uh, this sounds like it's going to be like a family dramedy. Uh, it, apparently they have three kids, and she wants more, and she wants to bring cats and a scruffy dog and uh, foster parents, troubled youth, all that kind of stuff. And uh, he's a city engineer. His name's Poppy Rose, <laughs> that name. Um, so, yeah, it looks like it's going to be uh, some family dynamic. And it's interesting because, you know, they were uh, married in real life while they made this movie. Uh, it's interesting to see that. Um, recently, you know, uh, The Quiet Place. Uh, that's another example where, you know, some of the, the stars were married in real life. Uh, so I feel like you don't see that quite as much. Uh, but kind of interesting, especially to see, you know, the older, uh, you know, from the 50s and stuff uh seeing how that plays out a lot of times i feel like there's controversy when you know a director was married to an actress and they're trying to you know stuff behind the scenes and how it kind of could have affected the you know the shooting and stuff like that uh, but 
next up is the pajama game with doris day this is a musical and i assume all of uh the titles right there are different songs uh all around the border right there if you can see that um but yeah it's basically about a pajama factory and uh there's a proposed seven and a half percent or seven and seven and a half cent uh hourly wage increase could you imagine <sighs> the, it's so crazy to think like you know how minimum i think minimum wage for like decades was was like five bucks and then within you know like uh i don't know 15 years it almost uh you know went up by i don't know what is it now like 12 bucks or something like that um so essentially over doubled uh which is so wild all those people who were struggling for those earlier decades you know people talking about seven and a half cent hourly wage increase um but yeah this was set in 1957 uh but yeah so there's a possible strike that could occur and there's you know a bunch of different music going on here and it's uh you know by the the broadway play as well as based on the broadway hit musical uh you know doris day the big star right there uh and i do like that when they include some special features right here uh there's a deleted song and a trailer so not much there um this one right here uh room for one more has a few more uh cartoon classics i they're putting more of the cartoon classics on here which i definitely enjoy uh and it's the operation rabbit and feed the kitty in the trailer uh this one though is a you know a big title so it has a, a few more uh some classic cartoons uh and comedy shorts radio show with powell and loy and a bunch of promos stuff like that so this one has many more special features and then last but not least is the Lone DVD, and it is SpongeBob SquarePants, the complete 12th season. And there you go, Nickelodeon and uh, Paramount's released this one, nice slipcover. And there's the back again, spine. I'll go ahead and kind of open this one up and give you a better view of it. There you go, same front and back. Um, and then you've got a swing tray, it's a three disc set. And then you've got, uh, and the interior goes over every episode, nice episode guy, you know, for each disc. Uh, <laughs> the swing tray just fell out. Uh, sometimes that happens, you gotta snap it into place, or there we go. So there you go, the swing tray on this one's cracked actually, that's why that happened, that little hub. Normally swing trays, I always praise, uh, it's the best design for these kind of sets instead of stacking the discs or putting them in sleeves or something like that. But you just got to make sure your one isn't cracked, uh, which is the case here. But again, a very simplistic design for the TV uh, sets like that, but uh, really well done. I like how it has the episode guide, the swing tray, even the slip cover, things like that. Uh, very nice. So some classic films. Uh, I'm not too big on musicals. I'm really picky, but I do like kind of older musicals more so than the modern ones. But let me know your favorite classic musical and your favorite modern musical there's been a few good ones recently i like the greatest showman a lot la la land as well um singing in the rain was all, one of my all-time favorites uh and then you know let me know your favorite cary grant movie that's a good one cary grant uh one of the great leading men of all time uh this one you know i just remembered uh at popping out and thinking about you know leading men and you know, uh, different era from back then. Uh, James Stewart, he's in here. He was like a rising star when this came out. This was uh, 1936. Um, so yeah, James Stewart, one of my all-time favorite classic Hollywood actors. Let me know who your favorite classic Hollywood actor and actress is. Um, so looking forward to that. And your favorite DC animated film? There's a few really good ones out there. So again, I would definitely recommend them. Um, and again, let me know your favorite Mel Gibson acted film and your favorite uh mel gibson directed film um so there you go those are the six pickups i hope you guys are doing well i hope you are having a great 2021 there was a lot of craziness going out in the world uh going on so uh, you know just keep your your calm keep your cool stay and watch some movies i just started uh my subscription to shutter uh and so far i've seen that there's a bunch of things i want to check out on there so uh give me some shutter recommendations as well i just watched host and I'll be honest, uh, the not the host with the, the creature feature, I think it was the Korean movie from a while back, uh, but this was the 2021 found footage Zoom call one. Heard so many people rave about that one. I was disappointed by it. It's the same thing that we've seen so many times before. 
It's just things move, little jump scares. I've been a big jump, cheap jump scare at the end. I've seen that movie so many times. I'm tired of it. I'm so tired of it. Uh, I like that they try, you know, for, you know, it's very relevant for today for Zoom calls and things like that. And, uh, you know, wearing masks and stuff. But uh, I don't know. It just wasn't anything new. It wasn't anything special. They just, you know, did the little 2020 take on it at that time. Uh, but yeah, it's the same kind of thing that we've seen so many times before. If you like those kind of found footage, uh, you know, internet kind of, uh, you know, FaceTime kind of stuff, uh, movies, then you'll probably like it. If you don't, then you won't. And I didn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, give me some more uh, recommendations for Shutter movies to check out. And um, also, again, follow me on Instagram. I'm 25 away, I think. I think I'm 25 away. I'm not 100% sure. I gotta double check. Maybe I'm like 100 away. I don't know. But I know I'm like 1,900 and something. Uh, so close to 2,000 followers on there. And I will be posting more frequently coming up. Um, showing collection, things that I'm watching, things that I uh, got in recently. Um, so look forward to that if you're on Instagram. Um, I think Instagram is definitely uh, the most active uh, for you know social media like Twitter. I feel like I haven't used Twitter in like forever. It's connected to my Instagram, so sometimes it may appear that I'm posting on there, but I'm not. Uh, and then Facebook, uh, I feel like for the Facebook page, like nobody really interacts on there anymore. So it's all about Instagram. Uh, YouTube, uh, you know, obviously. Uh, I don't have TikTok. I don't really have any desire to do that. So I see a lot of people doing it though. Props to you. Go ahead, you know, get on that bandwagon. Do what you gotta do. I get it. Uh, but Instagram and YouTube, that's where I'm usually at. Um, I do post on Facebook as well. Um, I would like to get more interaction on there, but uh, I feel like those two, you know, YouTube and Instagram are the biggest. But uh, again, I hope you guys had a great 2021. Let me know if you've seen any of these titles right here. I hope you continue to have a great 2021. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let me know if you've seen any of these titles right here and what you think of them. And let me know which one is your favorite as well. Leave me those comments down below and I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.